And then finally, I think loan originators should be soliciting people that want to sell their homes this year and spending time in the conversation of that and massaging that until they have a really assured seller and then bring that to their favorite realtor so that realtor can make a commission and that loan officer can be their mortgage person for their future purchase um, and stop bringing buyers to an empty table of inventory where you're putting more mouths at a table that has no bread. Bring the bread to the table this year. Bring the people that have the listings. That will be, make a huge difference. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Mortgage Influencers, where we bring you professionals who share insight into the latest trends, tips, industry technology, and services to help you be a mortgage influencer in your mortgage business. Okay, we're streaming live. <laughs> Hey, this is Ginger Bell. I want to welcome you to another episode of Mortgage Influencers. I have Scott Chang with me and a very special guest who I'm so excited to have join us, Miss Christine Beckwith. So hello, welcome. Hi, glad to be here. We're so happy to have you here. So, um, you know, we have a lot of content that we talk about uh, for individuals to uh, use to be influencers. And uh, I just, I just kind of want to share a little bit of information about you and then you can, you know, share um, some additional, because I know you have a lot of different projects to work on that you work on. Um, but I had the pleasure of meeting Christine. Um, I was at the uh, women's conference in Chicago, I think where we actually physically met for the first time, but I had known of Christine were probably about hey Carl for um a little while. Hi, welcome Carl. And I think I would, I would I would I would have been here on time, but the waiting line outside was just <laughs> terrible. <laughs> it's the usual Christine waiting line. Yeah, I know. And I said, but don't you know who I am? They go. Uh, no, we don't. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just doing a little bit of an introduction of Christine um, and sharing how uh, I was introduced to Christine. And so Christine showed up on my radar uh, from a client who said um, she'd seen a lot of your social media. And it's like, who is Christine Beckwith? Because you just started blowing up when you started your company with, with uh, Vision 2020. And, um, and we were seeing you all over the place and you literally came out of the, the gates when you launched your business and you did so many things correctly and everybody knew immediately who you were and, and you'd been in the industry for a while, but what you did was really put yourself into that space and broadened what you had been doing for a long, long time in the industry for a company to where you were doing it nationally. So uh, one of the things um, that we talk about is how to do that. And so I'm excited to have you on to share that um, because so many of the things you did were just absolutely brilliant. And so uh, I so want you to take over and I want to welcome- other, other things, not so much, but some of those things. <laughs> Oh, I know what those things Absolutely are. Absolutely brilliant. <laughs> well, I have a quote. I haven't isolated a quote. So, Christine, when I was doing the, the setup for you last week when we were closing out our call, um, and uh, and and Carl had made a quote. I'll have to I'll clip it out and send it to you because it, it was it was quite adorable. Uh, I love that. Yeah. Can you yeah. guys hear me okay? I, I've been watching this go in and out, and if I need to move, I mean, this is. 2023. I'll I'll stand right up and move this thing uh, <laughs> to, to where it's connecting. But um, yeah, you know, I don't know if there was a question in that, but yes, I came out of the gates. Um, I it won't surprise you. A lot of what I did for the 32 years that I was in the industry prior to going public with 2020 um, was marketing and obviously sales related. Um, but I did hire a formidable marketing person. I hired. Um, a person that had launched 26 best-selling books. Um, she had not ever run a formidable marketing company, but she had run magazines in the past. Um, I had great advice from my past CEO, who you all know very well, Joe Pinabianco. And he said, make your first hire the, the great one. Um, and she was my first hire, uh, Candy Zalkowski. And from there, she 
I needed someone to tell me what to do. Um, and I would tell you that I also spent a solid 18 months prior to telling the world that I was doing this, forming an audience and following the Gary Vaynerchuk $2 a day system. Um, I started to amass an audience. I had a challenge of getting 10,000 followers using his system, which was you know, an e easy kind of process of adding 10 people a day on each social site and letting those systems, you know, then boomerang out the notifications to all those connections that I was connecting to people. And then it just brought an audience in. And I had a goal of getting 10,000 people and I got 30,000 followers in 12 months. And then when we had the audience, that's where Candy kind of stepped in and started telling me what to do. Yeah. What platform was that, Christine? On seven platforms. So LinkedIn, this is the combined oh, audience I would grow. Cumulative, um, okay, very cool. Yeah, so Instagram, Twitter, um, Facebook, Facebook, two Facebook groups, um, and um, what am I forgetting? LinkedIn and LinkedIn business. And so, yeah, and then it just started to multiply and we made like a concerted effort to, you know, put our content at a nauseating level. <laughs> that um you know you do when you're really trying to make sure you're everywhere that's what I would tell you was our first <laughs> start so one of the things um and thank you for that one of the things that you do a very good job of is putting yourself into a lot of different conversations and and I think that's something that people miss on social media sometimes where you think what you're doing is about what you're just posting, but it's also about being involved with your community and <clears throat> the time you spent in building those followers in that community, staying engaged with them. So what are some of the things you do to stay engaged with that community? Yeah. So, you know, Gary Vaynerchuk, I'm going to say his name a lot. Um, <laughs> and, and Gary and I are friends, you know, and he's invited me to appear on his stages with him, at, you know, and I've been very fortunate to um, be part of his agent 2021. And, and actually, that's agent. where we met for the first time. Was it Gary B's agent 2021? That's yeah, right. in person. Yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, I, you know, answering your question, um, he does not delegate. And I don't know if that's still true today. But he did not delegate out, you know, comments and conversations that follow the post. So it's not going to surprise you. I'm not the person posting. Um, and we also don't rely on robots. So we have a eight person team in social media at 2020 uh, 20 here, and they are doing everything from graphic design. I will tell you, they followed me for two solid years, reading my books, my material, my copyright, my blogging, my newsletters, and went through hell with me to like get to a point where I let go of the reins completely. And for three years now, you know, they've been the graphic designers, copywriters. We have human posting going on. There are real people that are posting six times a day, um, not robots. We don't rely on, you know, for instance, Sprout or that sort of thing because the algorithms, you know, catch that and they respond differently with our social media because we're humanly posting. Um, and then what happens behind the scenes is I don't go on much to everybody's belief that I'm constantly on social media. I am not on social media at all until about seven or eight o'clock at night. And when I get on there, I spend, you know, a fair amount of, I would say, um, not scheduled time. Um, it's not consistent. I don't do it every single night, but I do it many nights because I enjoy it. And I talk to the people that are talking to my community. And I talk to the people that are talking to my social media. And I say, thank you. And I say, yes. And if they say something negative, I say, well, you know, let's talk about that. Um, and I think the biggest thing too is I'm honest and real with my voice. I think being um, attractive to an audience means not trying to be everything to everybody. I am less focused on popularity as I am on the ones that want me to find me. Um, that's number one. Number two, also, I will tell you, I could, I don't want to say, and, and please hear me, I love your likes, I love your shares, and I love your comments. But I have broken the algorithm of, of common SEO marketing, and this might be the biggest nugget your audiences don't take away today. 
if you come to me and say, Christine, I can do better with your marketing because I see you don't get a lot of traction or engagement. I'd like to increase that engagement for you. I ignore a lot of those conversations today because I know what works and I'll talk a little bit about that. But for the ones that really intrigue me that I sit down and have a cup of coffee with per se, digitally speaking, I love to go down this rabbit hole. Really? Tell me, tell me how you're going to increase my engagement. Well, you only got like three likes on that post the other day. I could get you 3000. Okay. That's great. And what are, what is that 3000 likes going to do for me? Is mm. that going to buy coaching packages? Are you promising me a sale of coaching packages? Because I'm going to tell you about that three like post. I got eight leads out of that three like post. Mm. Eight people chose to click on the call to action that's in the copy And we asked those three people, those eight people that that contacted us, did you like, share, or comment on our post? And you know what? All eight said, no, we didn't didn't do any engagement on your post. The one action we gave you, this fickle amount of activity that our viewership is willing to give us is the actual action they take to connect, to ask to buy your product. So I'm going to tell you, we sell a ton of coaching and our engagement looks horrible on social media. That isn't me trying to cover something up. That's me telling all of you SEO marketers out there that think I'm going to pay for likes, that you're out of your mind because what I'm paying for is coaching purchases. And so it debunks engagement conversation. I'm not saying that you can't get more purchases with engagement. I'm not saying that. I'm saying I get a ton of of purchases without, without necessarily getting the likes, shares, and comments. And so That is what we've been after from day one. That's what Gary Vaynerchuk teaches too, by the way, is that's your SEO. Your SEO is monetary conversion. It's measured behind the scenes. It can't be seen in public. Um, And so if you're a marketer, I would ask you how well is your marketing converting to the clientele you want and making them take action towards you, whether that's email, phone calls or whatever. And um, worry less about whether people love what you say and more about what if they want to buy what you're selling. Mm. Yeah, Carl, Carl always says, "Me can't buy eggs with likes," you know. <laughs> but, you, but you know, you know but Christine, you know what? You know what I'm hearing you say, and I've never thought of it this way. I have to think about this one a little bit. What you're saying is they're going to take one of two actions, but not both. They're either a going to like, or b they're going to reach for their wallet to buy whatever it is they're selling. Yeah, but they're the, likely the likes aren't buyers. Yep. And the buyers aren't like, that's interesting. I never thought of that. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Proven. Yeah. Proven yeah, I, over here. Proven. Yeah, I know. I For me too, on social, especially on Facebook, I kind of took the Carl White approach to it, which which was, um, you know, for me, for Facebook, I'm, I'm big on custom audience. You know, I like to upload the people that I want to do business with. I upload them. And those are the people that are going to see me. And all I care is that they see me. <laughs> Because I'm following up with a phone call. I'm following sure. up with other other engagement, right? But for me, I, to me, you know, it's like a digital billboard. You know, it's just, a, I just want them to see me, you know, yeah, and because, you but decide. I reach out in different ways. You know, we, we do yeah. phone calling and, and reach out, but they have that, oh, I know who you are when we when we reach out. I've seen you, you know, that's all I really care about. I could care less about a like or- Kind of comment. becoming a, like a, I always think of it as the weather man. Like everybody knows, or the weather lady. Everybody knows the weather lady. Yeah. And if the weather lady- you know, is, I don't know, at the grocery store saying, hey, you want to try this, whatever, new yeah. cracker or whatever. Mm. Tell us the weather lady. Of course I do. Yeah. <laughs> you know, could I, I, she doesn't know this, but I have a relationship, you know, you know yeah. with him or her. I'm not, right. You know, they like, yeah. dude, I know you. Of course, of course I'd try your cracker. Yeah. 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 And the digital billboard, I think, is true when you think about that's what you want. You want to have that billboard up when they're driving by every day that they see you so that when they're ready to take that action, they will. And Mm. interesting on the call to action, you know, on our call last week, um, it was quite an epiphany, I think, for Dave. We had a a Dave Steinberg was on talking about his podcast Mm -hmm. and Frank said, "Okay, what do you put at the end? Call to action. And he's like, Hmm, didn't think about that. And Carl, you're so great at doing that. You're charging for that, right, Frank? <laughs> yeah, man. He hasn't bill. paid yet. Got a bill hasn't paid bill. yet. We're following up. <laughs> he liked it. He liked it. Yeah, he, he gave it. us a like. <laughs> and he's being retargeted right now. <laughs> but I think sometimes, and and to the point, Christine, you're talking about, you know, that conversion. 
you need to remember that social media, it's good to have them see you. It's good to have them, you know, have that interaction and, and to put that out there. But how is that converting? And I had a conversation with um, Danny Ruiz, who's um, probably on the call listening because I know he's often on here. He's going to be a guest. He's been a guest. Um, but he and I were talking yesterday about TikTok and he does a whole lot on TikTok. And he was finding on TikTok that people were commenting, liking commenting on his videos on TikTok, but then they would ask, who do you have to recommend to get a mortgage? And it's like, are you kidding me? I've been doing videos. <laughs> That's interesting, you, you, really. You, That's fascinating. So I was I was just listening to a podcast this morning, a, a pretty good one, right? Actually, it's a real good one. And and they were, uh, they were discussing a great topic. And I know these people, and they're great people. So I'm not, it's gonna sound like I'm poking fun of them, but I'm not. Um, they, they, were, they were interviewing somebody saying, how do you get actual loans from social marketing? And they were given examples. Well, this person's got, and this goes right up to what you're saying, Christine. Mm -hmm. This person's got, you know, I think it was 500,000 followers sure. and, 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 and really not getting any business from it. And they were having this panel trying to figure out why. And I, I tell you why, and it's Frank, it's just what you said. They weren't asking. Mm -hmm. They weren't, they weren't at the end weren't of the- saying what they wanted. Yeah, at the end of the, yeah, what do you want them to do? Now that you've followed me, here's your information. Oh, by the way, go do this. Yeah. And if you don't have to go do this, nothing's going to happen. You have yeah. to tell them what to do. Yeah. There's, this famous, there's this famous study. I just, I, and I probably mentioned here before, I just love that uh, this was done by uh, Sugar Ant. What's his name? Something Sugar Man. He, he, uh, he's the guy that came up with the blue blockers. Right. So I can't remember his first name now, Bert, maybe Bert Sugarman. Anyway, I met him and we took a shine to me. So we, we had lunch one day and he was telling me that they did this study on home shopping network uh, in its early days. In version one of the commercial, they were showing the glass and say, pick up the phone and give us a call. Version two was pick up the phone and give us a call at 555-1212. So version one was pick up the phone, call us 555-1212. Version two was picking up a pretend phone, showing them how to pick yes. up the phone and how to push the buttons, which everybody knew. Do yeah. this. And version, yeah, and version two was like 47% higher wow. yeah, of a take rate. And so it's like- like We will not do a phone number to your point. We will not do a phone number. I have an un, uh, 800 number. We tried it for a year. And those additional acts are too much. You yeah. know, they want a subliminal, ambiguous dating intro, meaning they want to start, you know, they kind of feel they're going on a blind date, but you encourage them enough to get. But, but I think you have to tell them exactly what you want them to you do. do. Yeah. And it has to be strong. Like, call us today. Email yeah. me today. Mm -hmm. And that's like what this I'm link. Today. Yeah. 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 No, it's yeah. interesting though. And and for what you do, maybe the phone number um, is not a strong point, but but in my conversation with Danny, he, he has his link tree and he was using his yeah. link tree and they were setting up the calendar to where he's getting appointments, but he did add his phone number and he's mm -hmm. been testing it out and they are calling. That's good. And I would, so I would argue, I let's, the thing is let's get with him in six. Yeah, let's get with them in six to 12 months because I'm less interested in getting appointments also. Um, but you have to talk to a human to get an appointment with our sales reps and go deeper than just that first thing because there's a process of elimination where you, you the value of your funnel, no different than we teach in real estate, um, vetting, you know, who are you talking to for a realtor? You know, I'm always saying, obviously with realtor development, you're going for the person that's got the production and already has a guy that you're not going for anything under that. You know, I, I don't care about the ones that want to talk to you and have you buy their open house meals. Those aren't your guys. They're, they don't have business to give you necessarily. Um, and so, you know, yeah, there's, there's a very direct, um, you know, call to action. Not everything we put out is call to action. Sometimes we're just making statements that um, have has conjecture. Sometimes we just do a post that has a question. Carl is brilliant, brilliant at this. Carl makes me want to talk to Carl when in Carl in Carl's post. Well, I like, want I you to talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I do. And they're anytime, great questions, by just, the way. Just I FYI, anytime I see Chris scenes anywhere, I'm, I'm like, I feel I feel weird sometimes. I, you know, it's, it's it's like I'm such a groupie, you know, it's just uh mutual I, I, admiration. Well, I love friend. you. You're just such a brilliant lady. Uh, I just love I I just yeah, you're you're you got a lot of really good stuff going on. I love your podcast too, by the way. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. really good stuff. You know, I'm at an age, I'll say too, I'm sorry, uh, Ginger, but I'm at an age too where I'm kind of at the point where I don't need my table full. I just want the people I want at the table. And so I'm a little more picky with who I, you know, I'm also interviewing you. I have fired a lot more sales than you'd think in the last couple of years, because I can tell it is not the right person for me to consult. And it's a setup for failure because it's just outside of my area of expertise. And I'd really be stretching if I did this thing. Um, or even if I get a sense that I'm not going to please them. If I've got to go through like nine rounds of references and, you know, six hours, I'm going to probably tell the CEO to fire the guy that's trying to hire me because he, he can't lay the egg, you know, and, and I don't have the patience to work with that guy. Um, and I'm just being real right now when I tell you like, Learning who you are and what you are is part of the greatness we all come to in life. Man, and you, you, you know, got all that wisdom at 24 years old. I know it's amazing, really. Hey, I Christine, know. tell tell me tell me something. Like I, I, I'm I'm leaving here in nine minutes to go back to my mortgage practice. Give me give me a one actionable item to do that's gonna that I'll that'll that'll uh, if I do it often yeah. it'll move, it'll move the needle for me give me one I'm thing i'm going to tell you that this year loan originators do not know what they're talking about with economics as well as they should they're making really poor historical conversations that i can see on social digital strategy about comparisons between the 07 and the 08 market so economics for us is an extremely high classroom at the moment um, because we really want them to sound smart and correct um, number one in there, you know, volume is down and rates are up. But other than those two similarities, not one thing is the same as 07 and 08. So this tragedy of, you know, decreased volume is superficial by 30 to 40 percent of loan originators that don't want to work for eight hours a day. And this is not me wanting to offend originators who are listening right now to, on here. This is me making you stand up. And, and, and I, I guess my style in some way is show me that you're doing this. Show me that what I'm saying right now you're doing, because if you can come over consumer client objection, that's one thing. Second thing I would tell you is, you know, homeowners got the low rate in the last three years. They feel terribly foolish to call you to increase their, their rate, yet they have the highest debt they've had historically for decades. So if we marry those two things together, there's a lot of silent suffering going on. And if we understand that we've got to be the one that makes the phone ring, how do you present yourself in a way with your marketing that makes the person not feel dumb to ask for a higher interest rate, to start the conversation, to not feel obligated, to not be sold a bill of goods and get really smart economic advice about why it does make sense to save hundreds, possibly thousands of dollars by raising your mortgage rate this year um, and then have a future lower rate in the future. That's the conversation. And that's where the business needs to be found this year. We're having a lot of luck putting, we put a hundred originators in a pilot group with a wide range of past production. And I'm going to tell you, they struggled with what I just said. They struggled. Uh, 2021 and they could not, they didn't feel comfortable with this conversation. They didn't have all their facts straight about economics. They felt very uncomfortable soliciting people to raise their rate. They didn't believe in doing that. And when they got believable and they could see the value in it and they started having that conversation more and they lit a fire on their social media saying, call me to raise your interest rate so I can save you hundreds, possibly thousands in this market. That's what smart, wealthy people are doing. Mm. They got the phone to ring. Glad I asked. I, I, you know, I think the most important after hearing, you know, everything you got to say today, Christine, because I know I'm thinking it is, and I think our, our viewers are all kind of thinking the same thing too, is um in all seriousness you know <clears throat> what kind of motorcycle are you riding these days i mean it was I mean, what do you got the 1994 1200 sportster that was re uh built from the frame onto a okay. soft tail frame forward nice. brake ms dot light solo seat west coast nice. drop dealer fender uh bubba bad dog pipes 
drag bar, um, stretch, three inch stretch tank, forward controls, um, and uh, sitting on a pair of Orange County milled uh, spider web rims. And she's called the Black Widow and she's 30 years old next year. Frank, nice. and Frank, <laughs> Frank, this is going to blow your mind. I just mm. followed everything she said. <laughs> For the first time ever. So, uh, <laughs> Riveted oh, to the bad. conversation. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm just kidding around, but I, I was curious what you were riding these days. That's I, it. I, I, oh. She has a low center of gravity. She, she, she really is. Uh, she's been well-maintained. Uh, she has a lot of thunder still in her. I've had to, you know, replace parts. Um, my gear shifter completely came off shifting into second gear, Nice, you know, which is fun, by the way. Always thrilling. You know? Very, yeah, thrilling. Just, yeah. you know, yeah. and now I can cruise on it. It's not, a, it's not exactly a smooth ride. I, I can't say, um, because I sit high on, on the bike, but I, I still love it. And, but it's a cool ride. It's a cool sure. ride. I was born in Laconia, New Hampshire. So for all you bike enthusiasts, Laconia is one of the largest bike, uh, hubs, I was born wait, to an wait, it's more than that. Hey, Frank, this this probably this needs to be an offline conversation. I bet you that <laughs> Frank, that's the mm. home of Browning Radio, too. Just FYI. Remember oh. the old Browning Radio? Yeah, yeah, yeah. La Laconia is the motherland for that. So oh. just FYI. So uh, nice. It turned into yeah. my father's biggest nightmare because we had all sisters and we were not allowed to leave the house during this time every year. And then when we got 18, we all became adult female bike riders. No kidding. Um, yeah, cool. we had a bug for it. And so he has accepted. Hey, Christine, I got, can, can I ask another question? Yeah. I, I love these little questions. Yeah. What's, what's the one thing you learned in 2022 and what are you doing differently because of it? Well, I, I, I don't want to sound sad or morbid and I'm not going to make myself get upset but I lost my older sister on September 10th. Um, mm. And all year she was sick. And so, you know, market-wise, I'll, I'll answer it two ways because there's a personal and professional aspect to this. Mm. Last year, I learned, you know, some things about my business. I started with a certain model of the way I was going to grow and I got pulled in a different direction. Just like the tsunami of sales that you get sometimes you live up to what comes in the door. And the next thing you know, you're, you know, you're just popping up popsicle stands because people are demanding popsicles. And the next thing you know, you're standing there going, wait, I was a hot dog stand when I started. How the hell did this happen? You know? And so I have come back to the base of where I started and I'm reverting energy and, and um, forward motion um, back into what I originally wanted to be and not what we kind of became, if that makes sense from a marketing. I think it's just a always stop when it slows down to look around and say, are you where you wanna be? You know, mm. how do you go forward better? The gift mm. my sister gave me is watching the end of her life was both traumatic and beautiful because mm. she lived it to the bitter end. She partied all summer, there's no lie. Um, we went on these crazy rides on Sundays and as she withered away into her illness, we had some of the funniest laughs, some of the most incredibly emotional conversations. And she told me, you know, her regrets and her wants and all of those things. And that perspective for me has changed everything because I have a deep sense of mortality about my own life. And you know, all the stuff I used to get stressed about I'm way less stressed about today. Mm. Like I say, this is not life or death, this thing right here. Right. This is mm. not life or death. And so Amen. now I can, I have, you know, this beautiful, you know, when stressful things come to me for the moment, I, I, I actually am praying this doesn't change because it's a beautiful pivot for me is that I'm not getting overly anxiety filled by stuff that used to really stress me out. Good stuff. Yeah, I love it. Excellent. Very good stuff. Yeah. Sorry about your sis too. Thank you. Yeah. Me too. And glad you got to spend time with her. You know, I didn't think that's yeah. important. So cherish those moments. Hey, great questions, Carl. I love it. Um, Christine, amazing information. And I want to pull in because you started a little marketing thing yep. um, last year. Um, in the midst of everything going on. And so we're going to drop some links in, but, you know, uh, 
if there's one thing, like one thing right now that people should be doing. So if they're going to say, okay, here's the one thing in marketing, concentrate on this. What is that one thing that they should be doing in terms of their social media right now? Yeah, I think they should be soliciting people that need to uh, get money right now to consolidate high interest debt if they found themselves in a debt um, position and not be afraid about, forget about the mortgage rate, you know, get them the, the savings they need. Our resistance to that is hurting Americans um, right now. And we need to lead that charge as experts. That is old school mortgage, by the way. By the way, we never had the luxury of a low interest rate. I've never worked for a company that had the lowest interest rate in the 32 years I sold loans. Not once. I don't know where it was, but it wasn't with me. I was always out of the market and I had to figure out how that was. So you got to, you got to lead with that. You got to learn how to take the pricing conversation from the rate and it can't be slick and it can't be based on service and I'm nice and pretty and you know, all this stuff. You got to get down to tact and say, what are you asking me for, Mr. Smith? Is this, are you trying to save money? Because if you are, I'm going to do a thorough job, which you can bet against a lot of loan officers not doing this. I'm going to do a thorough job. I'm going to collect your documentation I'm going to take the time to get that. And then I'm going to quote your rate. I'll tell you a rate today, but I'm going to tell you what your, my competition didn't tell you. The rate they quoted you, they can't guarantee because if they didn't collect paperwork, they can't guarantee it. And I can guarantee it. We're going to go all the way to the mat on that. And then finally, I think loan originators should be soliciting people that want to sell their homes this year and spending time in the conversation of that and massaging that until they have a really assured seller and then bring that to their favorite realtor so that realtor can make a commission and that loan officer can be their mortgage person for their future purchase um, and stop bringing buyers to an empty table of inventory where you're putting more mouths at a table that has no bread. Bring the bread to the table this year. Bring the people that have the listings. That will be, make a huge difference. That, that's a Christine quote. I think we're going to use that. Bring the bread to the table, which you always do, my friend. Thank and you. a bottle of wine. Um, yes. On your Harley. So <laughs> That's it. Right <laughs> so Carl had to drop off. I know you need to right. drop off. You're back yep. to another one. Thank you so much. Love Thanks you. Thanks for having Thanks, me. Thanks, guys. I love all of you guys. I really do. I yes. really, really do. Oh, we Thank love you. you so much. So be sure you, to join in next week too, guys. Um, we have a special guest. We have Blaine Rada, who's the Senior National Training Director for ArchMI, who will be joining us next week. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next week. Thanks, guys. See you guys. Bye.